All right, my name is Marissa McNatt. I'm a graduate student at the University of Colorado at Boulder and um, getting a uh, focus in environmental journalism. And I'm Sarah Gibson, and I'm um, a scientist at NCAR HAO. And I study solar physics, the sun and the solar corona, and space weather and things like that. When you view the sun from the Earth, it appears static and constant. What is really going on on the sun? That's a really good question, because as we've gotten really good observations of the sun, especially ever since we've had uh, telescopes in space, but really over the last few hundred years since telescopes have looked at the sun, we've realized that it's not just a, a simple circle. It's something which is much more complicated, much more dynamic. Things are moving around. And it goes, and there are layers of the sun from the surface of the sun out into its atmosphere where there's all sorts of activity going on. What layer of the sun would you say affects Earth the most? Well, the sun's atmosphere, which is driven from the, the interior of the sun, but the uh, energy that comes out into the sun's atmosphere gets stored there, and it builds up, and it builds up, and eventually, and it can build up over the course of days or weeks, and eventually that energy, which is created by magnetic fields, can erupt in a very dynamic event called a coronal mass ejection. And this coronal mass ejection can send plasma, material from the sun, streaming out towards the Earth and can cause significant impact to the Earth's space environment. What kind of impact does it cause on the Earth's space environment? If there's a variety of impacts. Um, for one thing, actually, right when it erupts at the sun, there can be a flare associated with it. And the flare is a release of, of intense uh, light and heat. And this intense light and the radiation from it can come and can affect uh, uh, communication, for example, radio communication at the Earth quite soon after the eruption at the sun. But then, and there can be particles, cosmic rays that are accelerated, and these cosmic rays can move very quickly towards the Earth. It takes about eight minutes for light to get from the sun to the Earth, and it can take about 15 or 20 minutes for these kinds of effects to, get for the, for, to come and affect the Earth. Then, over the course of the next two or three days, um, you start to have other impacts. The, the mass that's erupting from the sun usually takes about three days before it comes and hits the Earth's magnetic field, and at that point, it can set up geomagnetic storms. What are geomagnetic storms? Geomagnetic storms are when the, the, the mass that, that's coming from the sun in one of these eruptions has entrained within it magnetic fields. And the magnetic fields, if they're pointing in a direction that's opposite to the magnetic fields that surround the Earth like a cocoon, usually shielding it from a lot of this, these effects, if they're pointing in an opposite direction, it can cause a sort of a break in, the, in that shield. And it can uh, basically whiplash material back in such a way that then causes more uh, uh, storms in the Earth's magnetic field and accelerates particles and creates aurora. And it can cause uh, disturbances in um, electrical power grids at high latitudes and all sorts of things like that. Can you give us an example of a, of a storm here on Earth that was created by the sun? In, 19, uh, in the late 1980s, there was one of these storms, and it uh, caused a blackout in the northern provinces of Canada, um, and it was caused by one of these large storms. Um, in the 19th century, there was an even bigger one, one such of a size that we haven't seen in the space age yet. Um, and this one, called the Carrington Storm, was so strong that it caused uh, uh, telegraph problems with telegraph systems on the Earth. There's an interesting point here. Uh, these kinds of solar storms uh, traditionally haven't really affected us here on Earth because we're shielded by the Earth's magnetic field. And in fact, up until the last century or so, uh, the main effect was actually kind of nice. We, started to, we would see auroras when there, were these kind of, when there was a storm at the sun, and then when it came to the Earth, you would see beautiful aurora. But because we now have satellites in space, what can happen is uh, the storm can buffet the shielding magnetic field of the Earth in such a way that satellites uh, are no longer protected and they can fail. And so as we have progressively more complicated electrical systems, power systems, and especially satellites in space, these storms become very important to us here on Earth. Are we able to predict the storms? Mm -hmm. We're able to tell. It's like weather. You can say that there's a pretty good chance it's going to rain tomorrow, but I can't tell you 100% that it is. So our goal is to be able to do something similar with these storms. What we can do right now 
is to be able to say that, there's, that we can see the storm happening at the sun. And we can say, okay, in about three days' time, there's a reasonable chance that there's going to be a disturbance from this storm as it hits the Earth. What we're not able to do yet, but we hope to be able to do, maybe over the next decade, is to be able to look at the sun for the days before such an eruption and say, yes, there's one coming up, maybe with 80% probability that there's going to be an eruption here. And that's important because of some of these effects that happen very fast. They don't usually affect us here on Earth, but if an astronaut were going to the moon or Mars and were less protected by the Earth's magnetic field, it could be very important to have predictions of one of these flares, for example, happening so that they could go and get protection quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an example of some sort of short-term effects of the sun on the Earth. How about long-term of term effects of the sun on the Earth, such as its contribution to global warming? How is the sun contributing to the global warming? Does it contribute more at some points and less at others? The sun, of course, is the ultimate driver of the Earth's climate. However, the variation in the sun um, there's variation between solar minimum and solar maximum about the, uh, in the terms of the sun's radiation. But it's a small amount as compared to uh, the variation that we're seeing with global warming. And there can be effects of the sun. It's an important factor, but it's by no means the dominant factor. And uh, there's no way that changes in the sun, uh, there's been no evidence that changes in the sun can explain the uh, changes in the Earth's climate. To someone who knows little to nothing about the sun except their view of it from here on Earth, what would be one or two things that you would like to tell them about the sun to gain a better understanding? Well, the sun, the reason I enjoy studying the sun, uh, it's, it's astronomy, right? And astronomy is cool. You can go out and look at the night sky and just speculate about these amazing, uh, these celestial bodies out there, galaxies and black holes. And these are wonderful things. The sun, though, has a, a particular relevance because the sun is so close to us that we're actually living in the outer atmosphere of a star, the sun. And because of that, what happens at the sun can have almost immediate or within a few days impact to us here on Earth. And then there's another point, which is because we're so close, we see the sun in the most incredible detail in three dimensions. It's like astronomy with a zoom lens. And what we learn at the sun can then tell us about what to expect for stars. Mm -hmm. How long have you been interested in studying the sun? I've been interested. Uh, I started, I actually lived in a solar observatory as an undergraduate in college. And so I guess that was, you know, 20 years ago or more. Okay. So a long time. What would you suggest to young women who are interested in science as a career? Well, it's a wonderful career. And uh, I would say go for it. Um, study hard, take lots of math and, and, and science classes, and just really enjoy it because it's a wonderful field and it's a great field to be, a, and it's a great field for a woman to be in. Thank you so much. Thank you.